Hello there, I've started a diagram that I call an energy cycle or energy circle and I would suggest you draw it and follow me as we go through this diagram. And so what's going on here? Well the uh, reactions occurring within cells and lots of other places uh, do one of two things usually. They turn simple molecules into complex molecules or complex molecules into simple. This is a clockwise uh, diagram here complex molecules to simple, simple to complex. Something happens with energy. Whenever that occurs, either side, something different about energy. But first of all, uh, one of these, uh, one side of the circle is a put together side. One's a take apart side. What's this side over here? Put together or take apart? Let's see, simple to complex, that must be the put together side, right? Simple molecules put together, put together, to form complex molecules. This must be the take apart side here. Complex molecules are being taken apart to form simple molecules. Well something happens in energy. This is a very general concept. We're going to apply it to ATP in just a moment, but this is a general concept that applies to a lot of things. We talked last time about how energy is stored in the bonds of complex molecules and the energy is released when those bonds are broken. So when simple molecules are put together to form complex molecules, uh, we can say energy is stored. And where is it stored? I guess it's stored in those complex molecules, right? And when energy is, I mean, when complex molecules are taken apart to form simple molecules, energy is what? We can say that energy is released. Now, Again, all this has to do with what? Chemical bonds. This involves forming chemical bonds, putting simple molecules together to form complex. This involves breaking chemical bonds. Now, and so when we're talking about complex molecules, we're talking about energy stored in the bonds of complex molecules. There's a term for that. It's called chemical energy. Chemical energy. We'll talk a bunch about that in future units. But chemical energy is what again? It's the energy stored in the bonds of complex molecules. Chemical energy. What was that again? Energy stored in the bonds of complex molecules. And so this is a general concept that applies to a lot of things. Like how you got to uh, well, you didn't come to school today. You're probably at home sitting back in your recliner. But how if you have to go to the grocery store, you're probably going to drive a car. Is that right? Yes, you are. What gets the car moving down the road? Well, uh, various things. But what provides the energy to uh, keep it moving down the road? Uh, some complex molecules in the form of what? Gasoline? Yeah, gasoline molecules are complex. And what does the engine of the car do in a very controlled fashion? It takes apart the complex gasoline molecules, releasing energy that makes the engine go around, and uh, sends those simple molecules where? Out the tailpipe. And so if you walk to the grocery store, same thing, except the complex molecules are the complex molecule you ate for the previous meal or two. Those are being taken apart in your cells to release the energy so we can make these muscles work and so forth and the simple molecules, the, the body has ways of handling those. And so, a very general concept. Simple molecules put together to form complex molecules. Energy stored, where? Stored in the bonds of those complex molecules. What is that kind of energy called? Chemical energy. Uh, <coughs> complex molecules taken apart. Uh, the bonds broken, energy is released, and uh, simple molecules are formed. Now, how does this apply to ATP and ADP? Well, between the two of them, which is the more complex, ATP or ADP? Hmm, I think the more complex of the two is ATP. Is that right? I think so. It's got more parts, right? So, applying this general concept to ATP in particular, ATP is the more complex of the two. ADP is the simpler of the two. And so what happens in terms of ATP molecules uh, transferring energy? Well, they got to pick it up one place, take it to another place, and release it. Where's, here's the pickup side. Uh, <coughs> how does ATP store energy? Well, you have to have ADP, of course, to store. And what happens? A phosphate, that third phosphate, 
That third phosphate group is tacked onto ADP, forming ATP, and there's a new bond formed, right? And there's energy stored in that bond between what? The last two phosphates? Yes, indeedy. And then ATP uh, uh, somehow gets to another place in the cell where that energy is needed, and what happens? That phosphate is removed. It's taken off, breaking that bond, releasing that energy, and forming ADP. And so this cycle goes on, goes on faster. The uh, you know if you're playing basketball or something, happens at a more rapid rate. And finally, uh, <clears throat> sometimes these two molecules are compared to live batteries and dead batteries. <clears throat> Which one would be the live battery uh, for? I guess ATP. It's charged up. It's got energy that can be released. ATP is the live battery form. And ADP would be the discharged battery or dead battery. It's released its energy and needs to be charged up once again. All right, so that's a general concept about energy being stored and released, applied in particular to ATP. All right, that's it for this one.